Hey, this is Mr. Raiden. This is Pre-Calculus Honors. We're going to be doing uh, Section 2.1, Quadratic Functions. So if you're from another Pre-Calculus class, my Pre-Calculus class, or an Advanced Algebra 2 class, or you just want to learn about quadratic functions, here we go. Um, we know that there's a bunch of different kinds of functions from this point in our math. We know we have things like the constant function, which is just f of x equals some constant a. So if we have a y equals 2, here's what our graph, what it looks like. It's just, it's always going to be, the y values will always be tw 2 for every single value of x. And then we have a linear function, which is, of course, the, our y equals mx plus b, or f of x, our function is equal to mx plus b. This is a graph of y equals 2x minus 2. You can see the y-intercept of negative 2, the slope of positive 2. But we're going to be studying quadratic functions, which is in the form of f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. a, b, and c are all uh, constant functions, obviously a cannot be zero because then it would be a linear function and this gives us what's called a parabola. So we have some parent functions here uh, of our quadratic function. You can see the green function here is our y equals x squared. It's a positive value so it's a positive parabola. It will always be in the um, a concave up per se and we are y equals x squared when we have y equals negative x squared you can see it's the reflection of that upon the x-axis and so the negative x squared will be a concave down function and so if you just have a negative in front you can see the difference there we also have you can see I, I've put up two general functions of quadratic functions the first one is y equals x squared plus 3x plus 2 I hope you can see there are a couple different things that you can see. Since this is a positive function, it will be going concave up in a positive uh, concavity. You can see this 2 right here is when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2. That gives us the y-intercept. And we also have what's called a vertex. Can you see the vertex here is at negative 1.5? We also have what's called an axis of symmetry at x is equal to negative 1.5. That's where we are symmetric under both sides. You can see this value here and this value here, this value here and this value here. They are all symmetric with one another. But you can see as our a value is less than 0 or a negative value, you can see we have a con concave down graph quadratic function at parabola. We can see this negative 2 right here is our y-intercept and we of course have a vertex and an axis of symmetry at x is equal to positive 1.5. Okay, And so we're going to be studying a little bit more of how we can represent these functions. You can see this is called the standard form of the quadratic equation. Okay, Standard form meaning that we have this value a, this constant a, we have this constant h, and then this constant k right here. And you can see hk is going to be our what we call our vertex, our vertex. Some people call this a vertex form. Um, this is going to help us out to find out our vertex. And so you can see in this function y equals x minus 3 squared plus 4. Our h value, since there's a negative right here, our h value is equal to 3. Our k value is equal to 4, and you can see at 3, 4 is what's called our vertex, okay? Which means our axis of symmetry, our axis of symmetry is going to be at our x is equal to our h value. So you can see at x is equal to 3, that is our x is equal to 3, that's our axis of symmetry there, right there. And so this is really, the standard form is really good in finding the vertex and the axis of symmetry. You can see how, uh, as we take a look, since this a value, you can see the a value is equal to 1 for this one. That means our quadratic will serve as a quadratic function. And you got to think of that as f of x equals x squared. So at 1, we go up 1. At 2, we go up 4. At 3, we would go up 9. At 4, we would go up 16 because it is a parabola. It's an x squared. When this a value is different from this, from 1, you can see how there's going to be a multiplier in there. So as we go over 1, we don't go up 1. If a was equal to 2, we would go over 1, up 2. Over 2, up not 4, but 
8, and so on and so forth. And of course, if this is a negative, it's going to be a concave down. So this is what we call the, the standard form of the quadratic equation. Sometimes you'll hear me call it a, a vertex form because it's a tool in our tool belt to be able to find the vertex. And so here, we want to identify the vertex. So we want this in standard form. This is not in standard form. We want to put it in this vertex or standard form. And so we have some ways to do that. And let me show you how to do this. This is our first example. We're going to do f of x is equal to, what we're going to do is we're going to group the x values together. So 2x squared plus 8x. The 7 is going to come out here on the outside. All right. Now, after we've grouped these, these values, we're going to factor something out. We're going to factor out, of course, a 2. And so we're going to be left with x squared plus 4x. And you might say, Aiden, why didn't you factor out the x as well? Because we want it to be in what's called the vertex form. And what is our vertex form is y equals a x minus h squared plus k. We want it in this form. So we want it to resemble this form. We can already see my a is equal to 2, isn't it? And we need to end up figuring out this x minus h. Now this x minus h squared is what we call a perfect square. So we're going to have to do what's called completing the square. Something in pre-calculus that you're going to want to do really, really, really well is called completing the square. And so when I do completing the square, I do it the same way every single time. I want, I'm, I'm going to leave a little bit of space in here, okay, where we're going to make a perfect square. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a beautiful perfect square. Now, what is the perfect square of x squared plus 4x would be x plus 2 squared. And so always take this value right here, this this whatever has the x value, and you're going to half that number, so that 4 will become a 2. Why? Because when you go to FOIL this, 2 times x plus 2 times x gives you 4x. Okay. Now, how do you know what number to put over here? Well, this number, remember the number on the end, is going to be this number squared. So 2 times 2, which is 4. Now, I'm going to add 4. Okay. When I add 4, it gives us this perfect square. It's called completing the square. Now, you can't just add 4s willy-nilly and just throw this in there. So when you add 4 over here, um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to subtract 4 as well. Subtract 4. Okay. So it's kind of like you're adding 4, but you're also subtracting 4 as well. And so that gives you the perfect square. Now, as you're adding 4, you're going to subtract 4 on this 7. But watch out. You're not just subtracting 4. You're subtracting 8. And the reason we're subtracting 8 is we factored out a 2. We factored out a 2. So really what we were doing is we're not only adding 8, but we're subtracting 8 as well. And so on the outside of this value, we have minus 1. And we are in our vertex form, 2x plus 2 squared minus 1. So I know where my h is. My h is going to be equal to negative 2, because remember it's a negative h right there, and so negative 2. You can also think about what number is going to cancel this 2 out. So x plus 2, how do we make this equal to a 0? That x is going to be negative 2. This value over here, this negative 1, that's going to be your vertex. So we have negative 2, negative 1 is going to be our vertex. Now, um, you can plug in another value. You can plug in x is equal to 0. If you plug in x is equal to 0, you can figure out where the y-intercept is going to be. Or you can come over here and think about um, since a is equal to positive 2, it's going to be a concave up. And as we go over 2, we're going to go not up, sorry, over 1, up 1, we're going to go over 1, up 2. Over 2, not up 1, 2, 3, 4, but over 2, up 8, okay? And it's going to be symmetric on the other side, and so you can see our parabola is going to look something like that. So that is how we identify the vertex of a quadratic function, by doing the, um, completing the square, completing the square something that you really want to be good at. So let's go to example number two. Example number two says we want to identify the x 
intercepts of a quadratic function. So let's go on and, and put this into our standard form. We have f of x equals ax minus h squared plus k. And so we're going to do a little bit of work at being able to uh, complete the square. So f of x equals, we're going to group our x's together, negative x squared plus 6x. We're going to put the negative 8 on the outside. Then we're going to factor out anything we can. We're going to factor out a negative 1 out of this. Okay, And so we're going to be left with x squared minus 6x. And we have minus 8 on the outside. So we know what our a is. We know it's going to be a concave down graph because the a is going to be equal to negative 1. So now we have to do what's called completing the square. So I try to do completing the square the exact same way every time. So this is another good example of completing the square. We're going to do f of x equals negative 1. Okay? And what is going to be our beautiful square for this? Remember, we take this number right here and we divide it by 2. So it's going to be negative 3 squared, x minus 3 squared. And so what numbers do I need to add? Well, I'm going to take this number and double, oh, sorry, square him. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So it's like I'm adding 9, which means I have to subtract 9. But remember, I factored out a negative 1. So it's, I really subtracted 9, which means I need to add 9 to this side. Okay, And as I add 9 to that side, we're left with plus 1. Okay, And so here is in my intercept form. You can see my vertex is going to be at 3, 1. Okay, So at positive 3, positive 1, that's going to be my vertex right there. Um, and you can see my a is equal to negative 1, which means I'm going to be over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 2, down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and it's symmetric on both sides. I know what my axis of symmetry is. Can you see I found my x-intercepts? My x-intercepts were at uh, 2, 0, and also 4, 0. Okay, 2, 0, and 4, 0. Uh, you could have also, as we take taken a look at this, took a look at this, taken a look, I'm not an English teacher, sorry, um, is we could have factored this guy, f of x equals negative x squared minus 6x plus 8, and did try to factor this guy out. And so what are the factors of 8 are 4 times 2, we get negative 4, we get negative 2x and x, which means you can see how when x is equal to 4 and x is equal to 2, that's when the y value, the f of x, is the function is equal to 0, which confirms exactly what I have right here. So you can see I showed you the uh, vertex form. I also showed you the factoring out as well. Let's go to one last example today. The last example is going to be example three. And so example three is saying write the equation of the parabola in standard form. We gotta remember what standard form is. What standard form is y equals a x minus h squared plus k, like that. So we know what my vertex is. So take a look. We have y equals a. I don't know what a is. My vertex is at positive one, so x minus one squared. My k is equal to 2, so plus 2. So I have almost my entire equation right away. I know my parabola has a vertex of 1, 2 right here. And I know it's going to go through the point 3, negative 6. So 3, negative 6 is down here somewhere. I know it's going to be like that, like that, concave down. So I know this a is going to be negative because if my vertex is up here and I have a point down here that I'm going through, then I know it's got to be going down. Now, how in the world do I find out what this a value is? Well, they gave me another point. And so I know my y is negative 6 when the x is equal to 3. And so you can see 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So 4 times a plus 2 equals negative 6. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. I get negative 8 equals 4a. I know my a is going to be equal to negative 2. And so there is my equation right there. I know my equation is f of x, or the function of x, is equal to negative 2 x minus 1 squared plus 2, which is exactly this graph right here. 
And so we took that equation and we put it in standard form. Hope that helped. That was our first lesson of the year, which is 2.1 quadratic functions. Uh, make sure you do the self-assessment. I'll catch you on the flip side. See you pre-cal.